As I'm sure most of you are probably aware, Force Friday was not too long ago, and that was when they released the first toys for the Force Awakens uh, film. These were among those. These are the 6-inch Black Series figures. I collect the original trilogy figures for the Black Series, so I'm familiar with the scale. This, this line is uh, generally pretty good. Um, I like the boxes that they've done for this new series. The black and the red is pretty attractive. They also have a, a sort of a line art portrait of each character. It's uh, fairly text heavy, heavy on the back. I've got it in four languages. Uh, just a short blurb for each person. Generally pretty generic stuff. I think they're trying to avoid spoilers. I'm not even going to show you the rest of them, but uh, you get the point. In this wave we have Finn, which you just saw. We have Ray and BB-8. We have uh, Kylo Ren, who is, I guess, sort of the star of the wave in many people's eyes, although it's yet to be seen whether he's going to be more of a Darth Maul or a Darth Vader. Uh, we have a First Order Stormtrooper there, which I think it may actually be the hardest to find of these. And we have Chewbacca, who is actually a little bit too big for his package. He's got his face partially covered and he's got his knees bent. Now one thing I like about these uh, packages, boxes, is that you can turn them to the side and they're numbered in uh, an attractive way with the red. Uh, I really like this and I may actually end up keeping these boxes. I often just get rid of the Black Series boxes because they're kind of nondescript. But uh, yeah, I think you could definitely display these. I'd like to start by looking at the First Order Stormtrooper figure. Um, it's a relatively simple figure in terms of its paint. It's only got, I think it's entirely or almost entirely made of white plastic and then the black parts are painted on. Um, in some cases it, there's a little bit of overspray or overpaint and it looks a little cheap. Um, especially the gun and the hands, I'm not a big fan of how they handled it, but um, overall it's a good looking figure. Now this uh, design, armor design, has been a little bit controversial and I'm not entirely decided on it myself. It's clearly an extension of the sort of, uh, well, clone trooper and stormtrooper original trilogy Stormtrooper designs, but uh, seems a little bit overly simplistic in some ways, especially the helmet. Um, you know, this here... I can't get over the fact that this looks like sunglasses to me. Uh, and also this this part of the helmet looks a little bit like a duck bill, like this would be something that appeared in the DuckTales version of Star Wars. Um, but maybe that's just me. I imagine I'm gonna grow to like this uh, better when I see it in the film itself. Um, if we compare it to the original trilogy Stormtrooper, this is also the Black Series figure, you can see some of the differences in the armor. The original trilogy Stormtrooper has um, asymmetrical armor in many places, like the knees don't match, and here the knees do match. Um, looks a little boring here to me. You can see that the weapons are very similar. The only real difference is, I mean, they're, they're totally different sculpts, but in terms of design, they're very similar. The original trilogy Stormtrooper here is all black weapon. This one has a black and white and a little bit of silver on it. Uh, but aside from that, not a big difference. Now, the First Order Stormtrooper also comes with this pistol, which he can have on his leg. You can also put the blaster on his leg if you want. I imagine most people are going to be displaying him like I have him here with the blaster in two hands and the pistol on his leg, but uh, 
Yeah, well, it's nice to have the option, I guess. Now, you, as far as I can tell, you can't put the blaster and the pistol away. You have to have them holding one or the other. The original trilogy version has a holster that you can put the blaster in, but uh, unless I'm missing something here, there's no where to put both weapons. Now, if we want to look at, well, first of all, yeah, I did buy two of these because, uh, well, with Vader, I always seem to want to have two stormtroopers to flank him, and I imagine Kylo Ren is going to be the same thing. Now we have here's Kylo Ren. He's got a combination of cloth and rubber for his outfit. Uh, this part here is rubber, his actual cowl hood is cloth. Um, it works pretty well, I think. I'm, I think maybe they should have made the hood rubber as well, although then you couldn't bring it down like that. I don't know if that's something that happens in the movie. We can see, by the way, if we look closely, that there's definitely a little bit of a Vader influence there in the back, which is an interesting thing that I had not realized until I got this figure. Uh, although, clearly, we've seen from the trailer that he seems to have a bit of a fascination with Vader. Uh, here is the controversial lightsaber. Now, this is a bit different from the one we saw in the trailers, um, in that the blade itself and the cross guards coming out appear to be connected. Which is not how it was in the trailer. I don't know if... They just used some artistic license for that, or maybe, I don't know, does it appear this way in the film at some point? I don't know. Um, I, I, kind, I kind of prefer the, the way we saw in the trailer, but this looks kind of cool too. It does look like a, a real sword. Um, aside from that, this is basically a, a lot of black. There's not a lot to see here, even less than, say, a Vader figure. Um, so it's a little hard to say, and without knowing more about the character, I can't say a whole lot. Speaking of Vader, here is the Black Series Vader, and he's quite a bit taller, well, somewhat taller than Kylo Ren. Um, the cloth they used for Vader's cloak is quite a bit different also than this. This has a little bit of a, oh, you can see a texture to it or something, I don't know if that's accurate to the movie or not, but doesn't look bad. Next we have uh, Rey and her Jakku outfit, or Jakku, I'm not really sure how you're meant to pronounce that. Sort of a Tatooine-esque desert world, apparently. Her outfit is entirely rubber and plastic, uh, and that's fine. It looks good. I, I like it, actually, but uh, where they've painted it there's a little bit of slop in places, the white and the brown are paint, as well as their skin color, actually. And looks a little on the cheap side. Um, her likeness... I think the sculpt itself is good. It looks, it looks like the actress. Um, something about the way they've done her hair is a little weird. Makes her look like she's almost got a receding hairline or something. Um, but overall, it's an attractive looking figure. It comes with her staff and what may be the best accessory of any of the Black Series figures up to date, which is BB-8, who seems to be a bit of a fan favorite at the moment. I think a lot of people, myself included, were um, a little skeptical when we first saw him revealed, just because, I mean, it's like he's on a giant ball, but... Uh, then when I found out it was an actual working prop, <laughs> somehow my uh, my opinion of it changed like totally. I just find him uh, very charming, and uh, so yeah, this is. I mean, there's not a lot you can do with this. Um, the head can go like that. You can go around a little bit. Um, that's about it. You can turn it 360 degrees, but it's it's got a nice weight to it. It's painted relatively well. And definitely, I think one reason why a lot of people were buying this particular figure was to get BB-8. Next we have Finn, 
also in his Jakku outfit. Um, this appears to be a pretty good likeness of the actor. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There he is. Some of these that I've seen online have had a little bit questionable paint, and I don't know if you can tell or not, but mine looks pretty good. Um, eyes are a little weird, maybe, but uh, overall, not a bad job. Now, it's got, like Ray, all um, rubber outfit, and I think that's definitely the, the way to go with this. I like that it's a separate piece and not uh, all just molded into one piece. He's got what appear to be these kind of dusty legs, dusty feet. Comes with a blaster, which is a little bit different than a lot of the blasters we've seen in Star Wars, although this uh, end piece looks a lot like the Rebel Trooper blaster. And that's it. There's no other accessories or anything. Now, you know, a lot of people have said that they should have included a lightsaber. I don't know if he actually uses the lightsaber with this outfit, though. Um, I kind of thought he didn't. I'd have to go back and check that. But uh, this is the Vespin Luke's lightsaber. And, you know, you can certainly hold it with one hand. It's a little tricky to get him to hold it in two hands, as we saw him in the trailer. Let's see if I can do it. Get in there. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's really it's really kind of hard to get him to hold it like that. There, I did it. Except it won't it won't go straight up and down. Maybe if I put it down further. Well, let's not worry about that. Uh, a reasonably good figure. Uh, we don't know a lot about this character yet, so yeah, not much else to say here. Final figure in this wave is Chewbacca, presumably old Chewbacca, <laughs> older Chewbacca, although uh, he does not look a whole lot different than what we saw uh, in the original trilogy line. In fact, I have that one right here. Um, in terms of the sculpt, we're looking at basically identical, I think, bodies. Um, different heads, different um, bandoliers, different bow casters in the sense that, here's his bow caster, same sculpt, but this uh, original trilogy version is a harder plastic, which is nicer, doesn't bend out of shape as much, and it's been painted silver, silvery, maybe a gunmetal color. This is this very nasty, um, well, it's, I've seen worse, but very uh, bendy plastic, and it's got no paint on it at all, as, as far as I can tell. Uh, speaking of paint, we have two different paint schemes here. I don't know that this one necessarily... I mean, from what I can see in the trailers and whatnot, uh, Chewbacca doesn't look that different. Um, I don't think they were trying to replicate necessarily his look in the trailer. It's just sort of two different versions of Chewbacca. I, I kind of like the original version better. It's a bit darker. Um, I don't know if it's... Some people have said that they think the quality of the plastic is different in the newer one. I don't know if it's actually a difference in the plastic or if it's the paint job, but there does it is a different look. However, I prefer the closed mouth, I think. Um, we can get a closer look here. If it'll focus. There we go. They're both actually um, quite good sculpts, uh, but it's nice to see a little bit more of a neutral expression on this one. I got this um, because I knew I would probably want to have one of these to display, like with my Jabba display uh, and Bosch, and one of these to go with maybe the other line of figures. So, anyway, it's a nice figure. Um, if you have the original one already, unless you want another one, I don't really see the need to buy this one, to be honest with you. But, nice enough. Here's all of Wave 1 of the 6-inch Black Series figures for The Force Awakens. Um, 
I'm pretty pleased with them. They're not, none of these are bad figures, I think. Um, the thing is, we, we don't actually know a whole lot about these characters, Chewbacca being the exception, obviously. Um, it, it's kind of funny to me that I have already spent a fair amount of money on these figures for a movie that I haven't even seen and won't see for another three months. Um, and I'm obviously not alone in this. A lot of people have, on Force Friday, went out and bought lots of uh, figures and other toys for these uh, characters we don't really even know. <laughs> um, and I guess it's a testament to the strength of Star Wars sort of as a brand and our optimism for the new movies, I guess. I'm definitely cautiously optimistic about the new movie. I'm looking forward to seeing it for sure. Um, I plan to get probably, well, definitely the main characters um, for The Force Awakens, even though I don't collect, generally speaking, the uh, prequel figures or, or toys at all. Um, I guess I find the the new movie to be compelling enough that uh, I want to have a piece of it. And, and the fact that it has um, Luke and Leia and Han in it as well, and, and I'm sure they're going to be making figures of certainly at least Han and Luke uh, later on, that also is appealing enough to me that I've decided to go all in here with the six-inch figures. So, um, you'll probably be getting more reviews from me on subsequent releases in the future. Thanks for watching.